Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I may look a little bit weird because I'm videoing myself from my laptop and I'm in my study area, which is why you can see my um, skeletal system. Um, it's just, this is my study room, so I have some of my study stuff up. So please try and ignore that. Um, so you guys probably know, but every second week we're doing a testimony. And yeah, it's a little bit weird doing a testimony over... Um, like videoing it and not actually being there for you guys to to talk to somebody so if i'm a little bit awkward or weird i do apologize to that for that and um i've decided to link my testimony to my teaching a few weeks ago which was about heaven and earth and how as christians we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth and how as christians we can give people other people who may not know god a little glimpse of heaven and well not heaven in like a morbid sense but like death but um heaven in a sense that we we can give them jesus's love and a place where everything's good and everything's perfect we can give them a sense of sense of love and a sense of comfort and yeah so when i'm if i'm talking about my personal story and my testimony um some of you guys know that i went through quite a few, um, went through quite a few difficult experiences, um, when I was a kid, um, or, yeah, a child, um, and most of them had to do with my parents' divorce, um, yeah, my parents got divorced when I was seven, and that caused lots of difficulties with my family and with the relationships within my family, and, yeah, divorce is a messy thing that can hurt people, and yeah, that was the case for my family. Um, and it was quite damaging to a lot of us. Um, but yeah, and as a kid, I really, I really struggled. I struggled emotionally. I struggled with my identity. I struggled with stress with people. I just struggled. And I often felt that my home um, wasn't actually a safe space for me. And this is where the church comes into the picture because the church and the people in the church became my safe space and they were really supportive of me throughout everything that I went to. Um, so if I start from, from the beginning, when I was in grade one and grade two, that was when my parents got divorced, I literally just used to go to church and I would sit with my sister. I didn't like to be by myself, sit with my big sister or I would go into the other place well, by myself without my sister. But I literally just used to sit at church and cry. And um, yeah, it does sound quite weird. But at, if I look back, I think that I probably just let go because church was like a place where I felt safe. It was a place where I could just let go and cry if I needed to um, because I didn't actually feel like I could do that in other places. And even though that could be super weird, even though me not wanting to be with my own grade and wanting to be with my sister could have been seen as me being like naughty or um yeah trying to break the rules the church and the people in the church um especially joe who was still leading um kids ministry at that time um they were just really supportive of me and they just gave me the love that i needed and then from grade three to five i had an absolutely incredible sunday school teacher and yeah, she just showed me so much love and um, she took me out for a milkshake occasionally and we would just chat and she just gave me so much love and she was always there for me um, through everything, even though still I used to kind of just cry sometimes at church and even though sometimes I could be a little bit naughty because I was hurting, um, she just showed me so much love and she was there for me. Um, yeah, and even through the years, that same Sunday school teacher, she's still there for me. And as I got older, sometimes I would kind of just go to her house when I was feeling horrible. And she would just, like, I used to just show up at her door crying and she would just open the door and let me inside and just give me hugs and give me love. And that was incredible. And so I was my grade three to five Sunday school teacher. And in grade six and seven, I was also not let down by my wonderful Sunday school teachers. Um, we still they were there for me and I remember so many occasions where I was just really struggling and I didn't know who to talk to and I would just go and chat with my Sunday school teachers and yeah even though I was still naughty sometimes because I was hurting and I probably wasn't the easiest person to be around all the time they just continued to show me love and at that time grade six and seven is where you are it's like being a tween being a teenager 
early teenager, but not quite yet a teenager. Um, you know, I'm just going to come out and say it, that being a tween or being a teenager, it's, it's not easy. It's not an easy time. You're facing so many changes and it's quite stressful. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really stressful time with lots of changes. And I really struggled to express myself. And as I went through those changes, I, I had a lot of emotional difficulties that arose in those times. And being a teenager isn't easy. And being a teenager in a family that has lots of problems also isn't easy. And all of those problems kind of compounded on me. And, and I started being, yeah, I started making bad decisions about how to deal with, deal with the pain that I was experiencing on the inside. Um, yeah, and I also, I didn't fit in at schools, so I moved around to through lots of schools. Some of you guys will know that I've been to quite a lot of high schools. Um, and I struggled emotionally, I struggled with anxiety and depression. And when somebody's struggling in this way, sorry, my chair just made a funny noise. Um, when somebody's struggling emotionally or practically, they often struggle to express themselves and therefore express themselves in ways that don't seem right, don't seem healthy. Um, that they can actually end up hurting people or hurting others because they don't know how to deal with the emotions that are inside of them. And yeah, and it's kind of hard to be around those people. And I was definitely one of those people that was struggling um, to express myself, struggling to kind of just be who I was, um, struggling to be the best version of myself that I could be. And there were times when I'm sure I wasn't the funnest person to be around. I'm sure I was quite difficult. I'm sure that um, yeah, I wasn't always happy all the time. Um, I wasn't always easy. Sometimes I was just irritated and sad. And those people can be hard to be around sometimes. They can be really draining. Um, but what happens to me is these people in the church, they did not label me as difficult and they did not, they didn't punish me for the way that I was feeling or for the way that I was acting. I mean, when I was naughty, they did punish me, which was good because I deserved to be punished. But when I was sad, they just gave me love. Um, and instead of treating me like a problem child or somebody who was difficult, they just gave me love, um, which was an absolutely incredible thing. Because in other places or in other schools where I was at, um, I was treated as a problem child and um, I wasn't always given the love or attention that I needed because I was acting out in not so great ways um but when i was at the church they just gave me love and church became my home base because of all of the love and support that these people showed me and i have friends amazing friends who stayed with me through all of the hardships in this church friends who knew that even though i was hurting that they still could love me and they saw the good side in me because they loved me like Jesus loved his disciples, like Jesus loved the people around him. They had problems. And I, um, yeah, so I had friends, people my own age who were there for me. And I had Sunday school teachers and, um, and child children's ministry leaders like Joe and Linda, um, who always just showed me love. And I also had, um, families in the church who would, who would just like, even just asking me how I was meant so much because a lot of the time when you struggle, people don't like to ask how you are because they're afraid of getting a difficult answer. Because if somebody says, hey, how are you? And then they respond being like, I'm really horrible. A lot of the time people people don't really know what to say. So they just avoid asking those questions. Um, but for me, um, people would ask me how I was and they would really genuinely ask, um, wanting a, a genuine answer. And if I responded saying, I'm not doing great, they would just give me love and support and praise. And they would like send me encouraging messages during the weekend, all of those things. And yeah, I guess my point is that the love that I experienced in the church was completely different to my experiences in, in the world. If I hadn't been shown the love from the church, I could have looked for support or comfort in other places in the world that wouldn't have actually been very healthy. Um, I could have looked for advice from people who didn't give me good advice, or I could have gone to people who didn't treat me with love. And then I may not have turned out who I am now. And those places could have actually ended up hurting me instead of helping me. So going to the church, having this place where I knew 
I was supported and loved and also corrected if I was straying or doing something wrong they would kind of push me back on the right path um that that environment that's safe space really helped me to grow in my relationship with God and help me to come to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and I mean if we look back on my path or my journey it wasn't always easy and I'm sure I wasn't always the easiest person to um, show love to but people showed me love um, in spite of all of my difficulties and yeah and that helped me to heal heal my relationships heal my wounds and become the person that I am today and yeah today even though I still have some difficulties with my family I I always come to God and and I know that Jesus is my savior I know that Jesus is is the one who saved me I know that my church is my family and I just want to grow God's kingdom which is one of the reasons why I teach Sunday school and I, one of the reasons why I invest in you guys um, because of all of those difficulties that I've been through and because those difficulties has, have taught me empathy and they've um, shown me the importance of, of love within the Christian community and they've shown me how incredible Jesus is. So why am I sharing this story with you? And yeah, so why did I choose to share this story with you? Well. I chose to share this story, this part of my testimony with you for two reasons. Firstly, to show you the power of the church in your own life. And secondly, to show you the power that you have in the lives of others. So if we look at the first point with um, the power of the church in your life, um, a lot of the time people struggle. They, when people struggle, they don't, they don't like to reach out to anyone. And I'm trying to tell you guys that reaching out is important. It's often the first step. We can't always help ourselves in the best way. And sometimes we need to ask others for help, which is totally okay. It's so good to ask for help when you need some help. And when we ask for help, it's important to ask for, to help, for help from people within the Christian community or within the church. And this is because Christians and support from the Christian family will give you good advice um, that's going to help you, or they should. And instead of using those problems to to struggle and to break away from God, if we look for help within the church and within the Christian community, we solve our problems by using God's advice. And we grow in God through our problems instead of growing away from God through our problems, um, which is a really incredible thing. So I'm trying to tell you that the church is a great place. And if you're struggling with something, with anything, go to God, go to your parents, go to your Christian friends, go to that place because that will help you to grow in God and grow in God through your difficulties instead of growing away from God. And then the second point was to show you that you have power um, um, as Christians to bring light into other people's lives and perhaps to even show them the love of Jesus and to show them God and to bring them into a relationship with God through that. Um, so like all of those people help, who help me, who I mentioned, we can help others. And we do this by spreading the love of God. And when we spread the love of God, we bring people to God. Um, and this way we're being Jesus's hands and feet. We're bringing Jesus's work to earth. And we can't do this in our own strength. Um, we've got to rely on Jesus for this. We can't show Jesus' love in our own strength. We've got to use Jesus' strength and Jesus' example and the power of, Holy, power of the Holy Spirit to guide us through, through everything. Yeah, so I have now finished my story. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, I hope that it taught you something. Um, and now don't want to just leave it at that, but I'm going to give you guys some like questions or things to think about, things to pray into. Um, yeah, so the first thing I want to suggest is that you chat with people around you, chat with your family, or just think about times in your own life when God has used somebody in the church to help you. Um, that's number one. Or when the church has been there to support you in different ways, or when you've seen the church help others um then okay you guys can press pause and chat about that um, 
And then the second thing is to discuss or ask God to show you people in your life um, who, who need to be shown the love of Jesus. People, maybe they can be your friends or family or even just ask God to open your eyes to people around you in your daily life that you may not think about, that you may not notice, um, to help you to, um, sorry guys, <laughs> to ask God to show you people in your own life who need to be shown the love of Jesus. And another thing that I want to point out is that sometimes God places people in our lives that need to be helped. He places people in our lives for a reason so that we can help them. So yeah, that was my teaching for today. I hope you guys are well. I hope to see you soon. And yeah.